Okay guys, here we are for round two. And it looks like we are up against... Let's find out here what we're playing up against here. So it looks like either red, green, aggro, or potentially we're up against uh, wolf run. Looks like it is going to be the traditional wolf run. Okay. We're definitely going to be on the play. And definitely need to mulligan here. And need to mulligan again. So hopefully going to five should be all right here. Okay, it's gonna have to do. Good. Go ahead and drop down graph diggers to turn off um, green sun zenith. I think it's like a two of in the deck, but uh, also kind of builds us towards Metalcraft. So if we can pick up a land here and then try to start putting together the combo. So here we're going to be trying to, I think, just pick up the rest of the combo. Um, Hex Parasite isn't really... Well, I mean, we could pick up Hex Parasite to siphon off his sphere. Which might not be a terrible play. Okay, so I think that, uh, let's see, if we go Hex Parasite, then like the next turn we can bring that down to zero. It buys us some time. Um, otherwise, we start putting together the combo. We don't have the other combo pieces. We do have a Trinket Mage. I think we actually want to go for Parasite here. If we can slow down his Titan, um, even by a turn, it'll give us some time. So the play here, I think we just reduce the sphere to zero, um, bash in for two. There's really no point to trade the Psalm just yet. I mean, well, let's see. Going to have to kill the Psalm anyways. So I think that's, yeah, so we, we drain off the sphere, if we bash in for two, he just trades, I think we just sit actually. Alright, so here I think we just want to, I guess we can trade, I mean trading just gives him value, we just want to keep him off of Titans as long as we possibly can. So 
like here we just trinket mage um, try to start putting together the combo on the other hand I mean we could have dropped Mortipod there just because he has Slagstorm but I mean like Slagstorm still gets us even if we equip Mortipod like we could have I suppose we could have equipped Mortipod and attacked for two but I think putting together the combo is definitely worth it And now there's no reason to attack because we just want to bash in with collar already. Like we could attack here with hex parasite, see if he trades, but it's still not really worth it. We just sit, try to keep him off of Titan as long as possible. Okay, so here we definitely do not block. Unfortunately, he does have Titan. All right, the play here, I think, is to drop Water Pod and then equip collar. See that's three, six, okay, so we have enough to take out the Titan. So if we if we if we drop mortar pod and collar, we have basically five points of toughness or six points. So he pumps two, four, six, six, eight, ten. Pretty close to dead. We could just Trinket Mage for Collar. If we Trinket Mage for Collar, we block all three Trinket Mages. No, I... Hmm. A little tough, I mean, because if, if he goes land, let's see, he drops a land. Three to activate, and then two, four, six, seven, thirteen, trample. We block five points. Take seven. 9, 11, go to 1. I think we have to Trinket Mage here. Because we, we have Gut Shot for the Ink Moth Nexus. Um, hmm. Let's see. I'm not sure which is the right play here. Either Collar or Mortar pod. So we got six, then we go to one. Who is everybody? Okay, I think we're, we're actually just going to Trinket Mage instead. So I think we Trinket Mage for Life Staff here. Just try to stabilize. And now we just uh, sit. I mean, it's it's possible there that it might have been correct to hold the life staff back just in case we draw a paladin, so we can end up you know getting extra draw. But we we needed to drop mortar pod anyway, and so I think playing life staff here is just fine. And here, if he has Slagstorm, it's just over, unfortunately. Yeah, so blocking Solemn earlier probably would have been much better. So now he pumps 
four, three. We go to three. And I think we're just dead on the table. Titan number two is to finish it. I think we're dead no matter what we draw. Well, now he finds out that green screen sun doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, and like even if we do Paladin here, Mortar Pond, let's see if we can, well, we can maybe, let's see. Um, so let's see if we sack, we gain 6, go to 12, and he still has us dead to rights. So I think we just want to hide our information here. He always could misplay, I suppose. But I think this one is over. Alright, so against Wolf Run, we bring in Ulrin for sure, Purge and Spell Scout, and probably Sword. Uh, Reaper Snag is quite good, Gut Shot is okay. I mean, it's good at his taking out his Nexus, but Grafdigger's Cage is. I mean, it's, it's actually fine, I mean, because it stops Green Sun Zenith, it stops. You know, it slows down Ancient Grudge. Um, we don't need Hex Parasite. Don't really need Lifestyle. Like, if, if we're going to go on the Grafdigger's Cage plan, then we probably want to cut Snapcaster. Um, if, if, if we just decide to ignore Grafdigger's Cage, just because, I mean, like, if he's going to... The thing is, if we drop Grafdigger's Cage, we turn off two green suns, and then if he goes Ancient Grudge, he just has to waste the first one on the cage. So it's, you know, it, it would be like, then again, we're also not building a combo. Um, if we just completely ignore the Grafdigger's cage, then we want to keep our Snapcasters, and then we're still a little bit, a little bit over here. Oh, uh, what do we cut? Like maybe here we shave one collar. Call it a day. I mean, we still want sort of War and Peace, though. I think that's the thing, is it's. War and Peace is something we definitely want to make room for. Um, hmm. Otherwise, if we go for the Grafting Ridge cage, cage plan, then we cut Snapcaster. So actually, we could shave. Trinket Mage here. Make room for War and Peace. I think we actually... Hmm. I think play here, I think we actually shave two colors, go for War and Peace, have some varied threats. I think that's the play. Not sure about that plan. I mean, it, it's possible that just staying hard on the combo is better. Um, promise is he's going to have a lot of hate for the combo. Post board, naturalize, graph figure, or, um, ancient grudge. So now we're just hoping that gather sticks, and we at least are playing around. Uh, whip Flare for the next turn, but we're going to need the blue mana if we're going to live through Slagstorm. Assuming that he has Slagstorm on three. And we have to assume that he does. Really need the blue mana there, unfortunately didn't get it. Um, I guess we just set up Mortar Pied if we have an extra turn. So if he slags us next turn, we're kind of in trouble. And 
this match could be over much more quickly than we had hoped for. Unfortunately, he does have the slag. Okay. Yeah, having the blue mana there was so important. <sighs> There's the blue mana. <laughs> okay, so now we just go Snapcaster into Gather. Try to rebuild. And we hope we don't get whip flared or slagged again. Master, so interesting. I guess we just take it down. Promise he's slowing us down the the inevitable turn for Titan. We do have to kill it though. I mean, I suppose we could just like snag it. And then he gets so much more value. I think we just have to kill it. So I mean he's basically using Huntmaster with Bog. We could snag the token and then next turn. Um, I mean snagging Titan is, is okay if you have board presence, but we really don't. I think we just snag the token and bash him. Like if he has Titan, it's pretty rough. He probably has a Titan, of some kind of here. Okay, that definitely is good. I guess we could just like snap cast or vapor snag and keep pushing. Um, Doc, do we really want to do that? I guess we just give him more land. Uh, let's see, so if we drop fortress and then we just snap cast or vapor snag, then we can't start making tokens, is the problem. Like we're just going to replay it next turn, and then we have to trade it again. But then we can bash for a little bit more damage. I think we just snap cast a vapor snag here. I think it's fine, actually. Maybe he just gets us a whip flare, or if he has slag storm. Either one is pretty rough. But I think we just have to just play assume that he doesn't. There's Solemn, okay. So thankfully he has no Titans yet. Okay, that's exactly what we were looking for. So now we put this on the other Snapcaster so that if he blocks that we get a little bit more value. Uh, let's see, so if he activates the Ink Moth Nexus to block, you can always kill it in response. I still think it's better to play here, because otherwise if we put it here, he just trades here we get less value. And like this way if he blocks and activates a block nexus we can then 
a little bit more value out of that faster. Hmm. So like here we could just whiff the one damage to him, which I think is actually fine. We definitely do not want him to draw Titan. I mean, if we trade with, with Solemn, let's see. So if we trade with Solemn, he gets an extra card, and he isn't able to block next turn. I think we just don't want him to see the card. I think we just want to keep pushing damage, even in the air. I think whiffing is fine. And I guess now, if he makes Ink Moth and pumps for a bunch, we can just make a token to block it, or we can equip the Mortar Pod. And like, equipping Mortar Pod here is really the same as just bringing back um, Snapcaster from the yard. Not sure which one I want to do more. But this way we can stop Ink Moth and also get a token for next turn. Yeah, I guess. Hmm. I guess I kind of like that play a little bit more. Like we get a little bit more value if he goes slag storm or something like that. And now he can't just like poison us out. Like I think end of turn we just shoot him for one, make a flying token, and start beating in the air. Assuming he's running like six titans or eight with uh, green sun, we have basically like a, a one in five chance of seeing one. So having him draw extra cards is definitely not what we want to be doing. Or he can just attack, and if he attacks, we are just fine with that. Definitely not blocking here. So I guess he just pumps for like ten. So now what we do is we main phase, use the token, equip it with the mortar pod so we can get his ink moth nexus. Now I think we just move the mortar pod back to the snapcaster, so like that way if he activates... Oh, let's see, is it better to have him on the token or on the snapcaster? I think it's still better to have him on the snapcaster. Well, yeah, because like this way if he hangs back with Solemn, we get a little bit more value. Yeah, the 
that's a good point. I just said something. Okay. I guess he just pumps three times. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve points worth. Oh, he's got devil's play. And I guess that's that. <laughs> so. Unfortunately, didn't quite get there. Um, but, uh, you know, um, kind of looking back at that, that match up there, not really sure about how we want to board here. If we want to bring in more War and Peace, um, <clears throat> I think like a War and Peace has got to be really good. I mean, what our plan could have been, we could have decided to maybe cut out Snapcaster, probably shave Gutshot, keep sort of more of the combo, and then um, you know look at using Purge, Spellskite. O-Ring, War and Peace, that's like a 11 card board. Then we, we cut out Parasite, Life Staff. I mean, like, he does have Devil's Play, so maybe we don't cut Life Staff. Uh, I think we still do. Probably Shave. Hmm. We'll like shave two collar and a trinket mage. We're working a little bit less combo oriented. We have snag to protect our guys and then just one piece to get there. So like this might have been a better better plan for the sideboard. I'm really not sure to be honest. Like being able to replay Gather a Snapcaster is really nice though because then you can get Champion out of range of Slagstorm. So yeah, if you guys have some thoughts on how we should board for um, for the Titan Ramp or front deck, you know, given the the choices we have here, definitely let me know. But we will see you for round three.